What's going on guys? Today I just wanted to do a video on how to build your very own audio interface for the DigiRig. Now I will be using an FT60 today, but I want to create this video in a way that anybody who would like to build their own cable can do so and follow this video. So this isn't going to be specific to the FT60. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I find the resources and how I found the wiring diagrams that I needed to do this. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually try to find a pin out of your radio speaker mic connection. So the goal is to get push to talk, audio in and audio out out of your radio. There's several different ways that you can typically do this, varying by radio. Sometimes there's a data port, sometimes there's a speaker mic port. Uh, there's different ways. But with this FT60, there is a mic slash speaker port right here. And it does use a TRRS tip ring ring sleeve cable um, to connect to that port. And typically, that's where your speaker mic will go. So you can hear things out of it, you can talk into it, and you can use push to talk. Well, if we know the wiring diagram, we can actually create our own wire and use that for the DigiRig, which is our goal today. So I started off by Googling FT60, um, FT60 audio interface pinout, FT60 speaker mic pinout. And I'll show you guys some of the results that I saw on the screen to show you how the conclusion that I came up to. But what I found, and let me move some of these components here, that with the FT60, the interface is a TRRS plug, and the, uh, the shield or the, the, uh, the sleeve is the ground. The next pin three would be the microphone. Pin two would be for cloning if you're connecting it to a computer. Uh, and pin one is the speaker. Now this may not be the same with every radio, and I suggest maybe you just take a notepad and write this stuff down so you can see it. But the ones that we're worried about, obviously, is gonna be the black to ground, green to mic, and red to speaker. Now there were a couple stipulations we'll talk about in just a second. Now the DigiRig pinout is always gonna be the same. So uh, you can use this as a reference if you need to, but the black or pin four, the very sleeve or the shield, uh, is going to be the ground. The next pin up is going to be for push to talk. The next pin after that is going to be for microphone. And the next pin after that is going to be for speaker. So you need to make sure that you wire. Obviously, your ground goes to ground, your push to talk goes to push to talk, mic goes to mic, and speaker goes to speaker on your radio. So the thing that will change is obviously the, radio, the part of your radio. Now, the couple of stipulations that is going on with the FT60 is. The, um, the microphone port not only does microphone, but it also handles push to talk. So if the microphone is uh, connected to ground with a 2.2K ohm resistor, which I did find this online. Uh, again, if you guys are unsure about your pinouts, just Google the name of your radio and open up the fi first five or six results of Google and go through them. And somebody at some point has probably made a cable or uh, they have the diagram for a speaker mic to show you the components that you might need. But in that case, the FT60, the microphone, uh, when used with a 2.2K resistor to ground, will activate push to talk. On top of that, um, the microphone itself needs a 10, I don't know if this is nano or maybe nano farad capacitor. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do have the capacitor here that needs to be in line from mic to mic. So. In the end, what's going to end up happening is the FT60 pinout, it doesn't use the, the cloning for the DigiRig. We don't need that. So we're only going to use the bottom two and then the very top, which is the speaker. Now, the next thing that you're going to do once you find out all the components that you need is you need an actual cable that can plug into your radio. Now, the DigiRig is always, now the updated versions are always going to use a TRRS plug into the audio port on the DigiRig. So what we talked about before for the DigiRig, that won't change. You will need a TRRS plug. You can buy these on Amazon, which I like to do because they're already split out for me, or you can make your own. But the trick is uh, to make sure that you have four wires spliced that are accessible that connect to each of these. There is a standard for these TRRS plugs. Um, typically, it is uh, black is the ground, a very bottom, and then green is the, the ring after that, white is the ring after that, and then red is the tip. That doesn't necessarily mean it's always the case. So what I suggest is you actually bring a multimeter with you. And what you could do is set your multimeter for resistance or continuity check. And you can take each of these pins and say, if I want to make sure that in fact green 
on this cable is connected to the second pin, I can hold one end to the green and touch the other end to the second pin. And if there's continuity there, it beeps. So it's good to do that just in case to make sure that your cable's wired up to the standard because it could be different, whatever cable you pull out. So that's a nice little trick to figure out what goes where. So once you find out what type of audio interface your radio needs, you're gonna have to buy that audio interface and either create a cable from scratch or splice one that you already have. Uh, and once you've identified which pin goes to which wire, you're ready to start crossing things up. Now the next thing that I would recommend is you buy yourself some of these test leads. So these are just alligator clips that attach to diff two different wires. They're easily connectable. And what we can do with these is make sure and do a sanity check as we go to make sure that uh, the wires that we're using are, are and the, the components we're using are good before we commit to soldering and taping things up. So the first thing that I want to do is again, I'm going to show you the diagram. You guys can see it here. If not, I'll put it on the screen. Um, we're going to try out the diagram for the FT60. Now, the first thing that we should try is just go ahead and try the push to talk because that's the easiest. We don't need to connect anything. Uh, all we need to do is, well, we need to connect our TRS plug to the FT60. And you never know um, how much voltage are on these wires. It could be you know, it could be strange. I know the RT95 had a lot of voltage on one of the wires for five volts for light. So just be careful. Um, don't let those wires short or you could hurt your radio. But according to my diagram, the microphone port on the FT60 should connect through a 2.2K resistor and then to ground to activate push to talk. So I'm going to take one of my test leads and connect it to the green, which is the microphone. And I will connect the other end of my test lead to a resistor. And then I will connect another one of my test leads to the other end of the resistor. And it will be ready to connect back to ground. So once I connect this to ground, if the radio is plugged in, it should activate the push to talk. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a frequency that nobody is listening in on. So here's the frequency. Now when I connect this, again, I want to make sure that none of these wires are touching. I don't want, I don't want to cross contaminate or test here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in TRS plug. Nothing's happening so far. That's good. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this to ground and see if push to talk doesn't activate. And it did. So we know that our push to talk pin is good to go. Now we could go ahead and uh, solder that up and tape it up. It just depends on how you want to do it. But I know this resistor is good. I'm going to go ahead and set it to the side. I know that that pin is good. Now the next thing that uh, you're going to want to test is the microphone and speaker. Those are the only two other components. So I'm going to go ahead and take my laptop that I'm going to plug my digi rig into. I'm going to open it up, go ahead and turn it on. So we know that one thing for sure is red is going to go to red. That's our speaker to speaker. So that shouldn't be an issue. Let's go ahead and connect those two up. Another thing that we know for certain is our ground we'll need to go to ground. So let's go ahead and connect the black to the black. Now, we've already tested push to talk, which we needed a resistor for. Uh, now, the capacitor, the 10 nanofarad or whatever that is that I'll put on the screen, it needs to go uh, in line with the microphone. So we're gonna connect pin two, um, which is green. So we'll go ahead and grab another one of our test leads from the radio side. And we're going to connect that to one side of our capacitor. I think we'll do the positive side. It is getting a little difficult to make sure these wires don't touch. And then we'll connect the negative side uh, over to pin uh, two white on the digi rig side. So the green is the push to talk on the digi rig. That should be the only one that's left unconnected because we've already tested that we know it's good so once you have all your wires hanging around 
No, nobody's touching nobody. Everybody's good to go on that front. We're gonna carefully, very so carefully, connect our audio jack from our radio. Again, making sure that none of our wires are touching. I'm sure there's a, uh, if I had a helping hand, this would be a lot better, but I don't. Um, so we're just gonna have to be very careful on what we do here. So this side looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the digi rig side. So far, nothing's blowing up. Now I will turn on the radio. Nothing's melting yet. Now we're going to open up the computer side and we're going to check a couple of things. I'll show you guys how you can test your audio interface. And we're going to do this without moving. But you can go to start and then type in system sounds. And then go to the recording tab. And if the squelch is open on your radio, um, then you should see audio coming through. So I'm slowly turning up the volume on the radio. And I do see audio coming through on the microphone side. So I know that the microphone is good to go uh, for a fact, because if I turn it all the way down, then it goes away. So I know that's where that audio is coming from. All right, I don't know if there's something going on with my alligator clips, but something isn't right here. So I'm just doing a sanity check on my push to talk. I think we'll be all right. I think this, the, uh, the push to talk or the alligator clips that I was using, something's faulty. I'm not sure which one it is, but right now, don't feel like troubleshooting it. Um, I'm pretty confident that my pin out is right, but that's how you guys would test it if that's what you're trying to do. Let's go ahead and plug up the soldering iron. And um, this is some cheap Walmart soldering iron. My goal is just don't start a fire. That's kind of where I'm setting my expectations. Try not to ruin the, the desk. But what we're going to do is just take one of our resistors. And we have also a capacitor. I'm gonna go ahead and spread the legs out on the capacitor. And we're gonna do the obvious first. So ground to ground, speaker to speaker. Those are very, uh, pretty easy connections to make. There's nothing that needs to change with them. The one that's gonna be fun is gonna be the push to talk. Once those are good, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, apply a little solder to make sure that they get held together. So I'm going to take some of my solderer. I'm pretty rusty on my soldering skills since I moved. I, I haven't had my entire station. I just bought this one at Walmart for $15. Um, so soldering is going to be just a little bit rough, but it's just going to be enough to, to get the tips to stay. Hopefully it's hot enough. This is a pretty low wattage soldering iron. Make sure you breathe in as much fumes as possible when you're soldering. It's, it's good for your uh, diet or something, I don't know. So these are tinned. Basically, I'm tinning these. Um, so there goes the black. I'm going to go ahead and do the red. Try not to uh, melt it to the paper. So the resistor, and you always want to triple check. This is kind of like a measure once cut, cut or measure 10 times cut once type deal. Um, but the resistor needs to be between the mic and the push to talk, which is green on the digi rig side. So this is where sides start kind of mattering a little bit. So I guess my uh, my phone's camera just got full and it erased, basically stopped recording when I started soldering, which kind of sucks. But this is the wiring diagram. We have everything wired together. It's not beautiful. We have it soldered. And now 
we're just going to take these connections and try to tape them up in a way where they won't uh, touch each other. That's the main goal. We do need to remember what side is what. And I didn't think about that, but um, let's go ahead and mark that somehow. So the side with both the capacitor, let's see. So the side with both the capacitor and the resistor touching is going to be the radio side. So the radio side we will mark with some tape on one end. That way I will know once I seal this thing up. All right, once I feel it's adequately protected, now it's time to actually try the cable out. And let's hope to God it works, because uh, that was a lot of work. So the way we're going to test it out is we're going to try to do some APRS. All right, awesome. That was definitely an APRS packet. It sounded clear and beautiful. It looks to me like this is working now. All right, so all in all, uh, that was a pretty big success. Uh, it could have been done a little bit better if I had some better soldering tools, uh, uh, heat shrink and stuff like that for the cables. But I was, uh, when I looked at my packets, uh, the digipeter that's normally around here is not on today. It might be because it's a weird Memorial Day thing. Maybe they're using it for something else. I'm not sure. But I was able to digipede a packet over to the bow thing and use the APRS cable uh, to actually receive it um, with my cell phone when I wasn't videoing. So it is working. Uh, the squelch cuts you know, on and off. I did notice that there's a problem with the FT60 where um, the cable's kind of loose. So it can, if you jiggle the cable around on the inside, it can actually activate the push to talk and it would stay on until you turn the radio off or the timeout timer activates, which isn't good. Seems to be a big problem I see all online. But uh, anyways, this is successful. That's, that's basically the premise of how you make your own DigiRig cable. So the beauty of uh, the DigiRig is you can take just about any radio with the, any type of audio interface and easily make that cable. And then on the computer side, it's always gonna be the same configuration. Push to talk's always gonna be the same. The audio interfaces is always gonna be the same. So every time you change radios, you don't really have to fool around with trying to um, adjust the settings. I want to give a big shout out to my channel members, James Jenner, Bart Killam, Van Flick, I think I got your name right this time, Google Must Die, Hanil Vanderwalt, and Scott Pasternak. Uh, appreciate you guys for being members of the channel. I appreciate everybody watching this, and get out there and start making some cables. 73 to you.